top five must know tips when you're starting your fitness journey. Everybody knows a fitness journey can be kind of difficult and there's a lot of things that go into it. So that's what we're gonna cover today. The easiest way to understand your diet when it comes to fitness is understanding the concept of calories in versus calories out. So if you're trying to lose weight, you need to consume less calories than your body is burning. So put less calories in your body than your body is putting out. Calories in versus calories out. Lose weight, you wanna consume less calories than your body burns. If you wanna gain weight, you wanna consume more calories than your body burns. So calories in versus calories out is very, very simple. Don't try to make your diet too complicated. Don't get it too much into the weeds. Just think, consume more calories or consume less calories. It is that simple. Calories in versus calories out. If you want to lose weight, it's critical that you create a calorie deficit. This means you're consuming less calories than what your body is burning in any given day. So the best way to consume less calories is to eat a balanced diet, eat healthy food. This is the best way to not feel super hungry, but also get enough calories in. You gotta balance your calories for weight loss. So the best way to eat enough food to where you're not starving, but you're also eating less calories to lose weight is to eat healthy food. So that's why people always say, eat healthier food. But it can be simple. You can literally eat only ice cream in a day, but if you eat less calories than ice cream and your body burns, then yeah, scientifically, you will lose weight. Is that the best way to do it? No, I don't suggest that. But this is true. Calories in versus calories out. It's as simple as that. Number two, how many days a week should you work out? Well, when you're a beginner, you're just starting out, three to four days a week is plenty. Don't try to do six, seven days a week because you saw fitness influencer online working out six, to seven days a week. Guess what? They've been working out for years. Their body is able to do that because they built up to that level. But when you're first starting out, three to four days a week is all you need. Don't try to do too much because you will overtrain, you will hurt yourself, you will get injured, and eventually you're gonna fall off. You're not gonna stick to your fitness goals because you're gonna hate going to the gym every day if you're trying to push yourself to do that much. Start small and work your way up to those five, six, seven days a week. You won't even need to do that much until a few years down the road. So quit trying to follow what you see online from these crazy jack fitness influencers because what they're doing, what works for them, it's not gonna work for you, especially if you're a beginner. Number three, rest and recover. You gotta recover and you gotta rest if you wanna see progress. You can't just go to the gym seven days a week, grind it out and tear your body down. You gotta give it time to rebuild. You gotta give your body time to recuperate because that's when you're gonna grow. You're gonna build muscle when you're resting. You're not gonna build muscle on the days that you work out. On the days that you work out, when you're going to the gym, those are the days you're tearing down your muscles. On the days that you take off, those are the days you're going to repair and recover your muscles. So depending on how you structure your workout routine, you can optimize your workout routine to fit rest days in there. There's several different ways to incorporate rest days. You can work out one day, rest the next day, work out one day, rest the next day. Or you can work out all week and then take the whole weekend off. There are several different ways to fit rest days into your workout routine. So just find out what works best for you and your schedule and incorporate them that way. Number four, cardio versus weights when it comes to build a muscle and losing weight. When should you do which? Well, in my opinion, you should do both depending on what your goals are. If you're trying to lose weight, cardio obviously is gonna be very good for you to burn more calories and help you lose weight. But building muscle, strength training, is also gonna be good for you losing weight because you're gonna boost your metabolism. You're gonna put more muscle on your body. Muscle burns more calories on your body. So by putting on more muscle, you're gonna burn more calories throughout the day, which is gonna help in your weight loss. So it's important to not only do cardio for losing weight, but also to do weight training when you're losing weight. It's gonna be more sustainable to do both over time. You'll see better results. And then when it comes to building muscle, yeah, obviously you wanna work out to build muscle. That's a given. But I also say you should do cardio too because cardio is good for your heart. You're gonna get the, the cardiovascular benefits from doing cardio. Yeah, cardio is not necessarily gonna help you build any muscle, but it's gonna help you stay healthy. It's gonna help you perform over the long term. It's gonna help you perform better in the gym because you can last longer because you got better cardio. So I suggest doing both, no matter what your goal is, cardio and strength training, do both. And last but not least, number five, you gotta remember that your fitness journey is not gonna be easy. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be hard. There's gonna be days you wanna quit. Your fitness journey, it's gonna be a roller coaster. There's gonna be ups, there's gonna be downs. It's not gonna be smooth sailing from here on out. You just gotta know that going into it. It's gonna be tough. If it was easy, everybody would do it. 
So set realistic expectations on what it is that you think you can do and what it is that your goals are. Don't make a crazy, way out of the ordinary goal that you don't think you can ever achieve. Make realistic goals. Setbacks are gonna happen. That's just part of a fitness journey. You just gotta stay focused, stay motivated, get clear on what it is that you're trying to achieve, and ultimately, you will overcome those challenges when they arise. There's gonna be tough days, you gotta get motivated, you gotta be disciplined to still go to the gym when you woke up late and you don't wanna go to the gym, or when you didn't get a lot of rest that night, hey, you may have to sacrifice an hour of sleep to still go to the gym and work out. You gotta get it done either way. Don't make excuses. It's gonna be tough, but it'll be worth it. I've never been to the gym and regretted going to the gym when I got done. Like I've never walked out of the gym and said, man, I really wish I wouldn't have went to the gym today. Like I've never done that. Good. It's gonna be worth it. Yeah, some days when I'm going into the gym, I wish I say, man, I really don't wanna be here right now. But when I leave the gym, I always say, I'm glad that I did come. I'm glad that I did do it and did put the work in. You're not gonna regret a workout, I promise. So to run it back one more time, the five things you need to know in order to have a successful fitness journey is calories in versus calories out, how many days a week you should work out, rest and recovery is very important, when to do cardio versus when to do weights, depending on what your goals are, building muscle versus losing weight. And that is not gonna be easy. There's gonna be setbacks, there's gonna be challenges, there's gonna be ups and downs. You gotta push through, you gotta persevere, and you gotta get it done no matter what. So I highly, highly suggest that you apply these principles to your own fitness journey because they're gonna help you achieve those goals that you're setting for yourself for the new years. January 1st is right around the corner. New year, new me. Y'all know how it goes. These suggestions are generalized and certain individuals may need to tailor their approach based on personal preferences, fitness levels, and specific goals. It's crucial to consult with a healthcare professional or a fitness expert before starting any new exercise or nutrition program. Thank y'all so much for watching the video. Let me know in the comments which one of these five are you gonna incorporate into your fitness journey today. If you like the content, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more fitness content coming your way.